Hey guys, it's Robin, and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about nutrition. There are so many diet plans out there. Paleo, keto, vegan whole foods, gluten-free, carnivore, Atkins, those are just to name a small few. It's so overwhelming to decide how to eat for ourselves when we're bombarded with all these different diet plans constantly. This is where a better understanding of the mechanisms behind nutrition can be so helpful. And actually, once you begin to understand what's happening in our bodies when we eat certain ways, you'll also realize that many diet plans have a lot in common, more so than we might think. Today I'm going to be talking about one of those similarities, which is minimizing the glycemic impact of your food. Or in other words, making sure that the foods you eat don't spike your blood sugar too much. There are many studies supporting the idea that lower glycemic foods are really helpful for maintaining body weight, maintaining hormonal balance, maintaining mental health and mood, preserving cognitive function even. To backtrack, I don't know if you're already familiar with the glycemic index, but it's a metric to essentially measure the blood sugar spike we get after eating certain foods. Glycemic load is another metric built off of the glycemic index that just takes portion size or serving size into account. So that's helpful because it's a bit more of a realistic picture of what might be happening in our body. So how can we use this information to our advantage? Well, most diet plans tell you to eat certain things or to avoid other things. I'm not going to tell you what types of carbohydrates to eat or not eat. I think that that's actually a downfall of many diet plans because it's restrictive, it's not sustainable, and it's not a fun way of thinking about food. Instead, I'd like to introduce an alternative philosophy, which is something I personally practice, and that is setting our body up to digest and absorb those carbohydrates in the best way possible and in a way that's not going to spike our blood sugar levels. In this video, I'm going to share four different ways to alter the context in which you eat carbohydrates. So the first way to minimize the blood sugar impact of your meal is to add fiber. And this might sound very obvious, but this is useful to think about even if you're eating foods that aren't inherently fiber rich, like a piece of white bread instead of a piece of brown bread. Adding fiber, so vegetables with a lot of cellulose, leafy greens, celery, mushrooms, onions, works by speeding up the transit time of your food in the small intestines. This is where most of your sugar uptake happens. Uh, as your food is traveling through the small intestines. So it might sound a bit counterintuitive, but by speeding up that process, you're actually making it a bit harder for your body to quickly get all the sugar out of your meal. Um, that is actually really good for us because then we don't have this onslaught of sugar after we eat. We get instead a bit of a trickling of glucose through our bloodstream, which is what we want to maintain blood sugar levels, energy levels, and everything like that. So add fiber. A similar second way to speed up the transit time of your food in your small intestines is to add water to your meals. Adding water can either literally be through drinking a cup of water with your meal, or it can be through eating soups or whole raw vegetables with your meal. Cucumber, apples, for example, have a lot of water. Adding water can help to, again, speed up that time that your body is able to get all the sugars out of your meal and ultimately keep your food from just accosting your body with carbohydrates in one go. A third way to minimize the impact of your food on your blood sugar is to think about the quantity you're eating in a given time period. This might sound very obvious, but eating one piece of cake in a 10 minute window is going to have a different impact on your blood sugar than eating three pieces of cake in that 10 minute window. It's also going to have a different impact on your blood sugar than eating three pieces of cake spread out over six hours. So again, just thinking about not overwhelming the body with 
too many carbohydrates and sugars at once can really help to sustain energy levels. Just enjoy things in moderation, as cliche as it is, that really is gonna help to keep your blood sugar levels stable. A fourth way that's a bit different than the others to keep your blood sugar levels stable is to preload your meals with protein or to also enjoy protein at the beginning of a meal. So this is something that has been researched quite significantly. In protein, something happens that is coined the second meal effect, where consuming protein before a meal or even at the beginning of a meal can help lower the rate of gastric emptying of your food from your stomach into your small intestines. So remember, the small intestines are where the majority of your carbohydrates are being absorbed. So by slowing the rate of food emptying into the small intestines, you're again keeping the body from getting a whole rush of carbohydrates all at once. So the second meal effect is really the idea that preloading a meal with protein or even eating protein at the beginning of the meal can help your body to process the subsequent meal in a more balanced way. To make this a little bit more concrete, there's a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that did a white bread test with three different groups. There was a group that had a high protein breakfast, a high fat breakfast, and a high carbohydrate breakfast, all of which were followed by a white bread challenge, which was, I believe, just white bread. I'll link the study down below. But in the end, the group with the significant reduction in blood glucose level after eating the white bread was the group that had the high protein breakfast. So starting your day off with protein, or even if you are planning to, for example, go to a birthday party and enjoy lots of delicious cake, if you preload that birthday party, even with an egg or some other protein source, whey, hemp, your body will actually process that cake differently than if you didn't eat the protein beforehand. And it will process it in a more sustained way because the emptying from the stomach to the intestines will be slowed. Hopefully this isn't too technical. I'm still figuring out how in depth I wanna go with all of these videos. But a key takeaway to this video, I think, is really the idea that Keeping your blood sugar levels stable can be so helpful in regulating your mood, your body weight, your hormones, your appetite, and there are ways to do this without limiting your diet too drastically and just by being mindful of the ways in which you're eating your carbohydrates and hopefully enjoying them as well. So really just by adding fiber, water, thinking about the quantity of carbohydrates in your meal, and also by adding protein during or before your meal, you can really keep your blood sugar levels stable. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'd love to know your thoughts and hear your feedback. The citations will all be listed in the description box. And with that said, I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.